Okay. Uh, so we are now broadcasting live on a YouTube channel and Facebook and uh, Instagram. Same okay. Time. okay. Yeah, so, so we can tell. So you got TikTok. us all connected here. Yes, we're all connected. I've got all the different cameras okay, running so at the same the time. Doctor for the is in the house. Dr. Vincent Moreau is in the house. Thank goodness. I needed a TikTok doctor today, but we couldn't seem to get that to, to work. But here we are on Instagram. Um, I'm Sexy Chef Wendy, as a lot of you may know or not know. And um, I, my whole message is to promote love and rekindle relationships through cooking. If anyone wants me to uh, shout out, just tell me your first name in the messaging and I'll say hello to you, by the way. And um, anyway, so Dr. Vincent Moreau, who's a chef as yeah. well, he is from, from originally from Paris? Well, I'm, I, am or, I am originally from Poland, but I was born in France and then I grew up in Italy. So I've got different cuisine background, let's say. So today will be like typical Italian menu with your pesto as, uh, as antipasti, for example, and then so, the main course would be pasta. So you're international. That's where you get that, that handle from, right? Exactly, um, yeah. So they can do videos in, in different languages at the same time. We've got I reach out to the audience in different countries. I oh, know my face is cut off. The screen is low. Let's get, I don't know so, how I'm going to show people that I'm cooking. I'm going to have to hold it up like this. So basically, the meal, the meal that I would be cooking, in Italian, we call it uh, pasta al ragu. But in North America, we call it like bolognese sauce. Bolognese? Bolognese sauce. Yeah, this is what, what you say. In the bolognese sauce? Yes, exactly. The homemade from scratch. I'm very thirsty. I've already been talking yeah. about, like nonstop. San Benedetto, so, yeah. <laughs> well, OK, are so, you a chef by trade? So basically, this is the this is the point. I didn't uh, go to uh, to cooking school or anything, but you can pick anybody in Italy, and everybody knows to cook. I right? Did not, I didn't go to culinary school I, either. I started cooking, um, and you know, and I've had restaurants, so I, I agree with you. And some of the best chefs I know, even though we're uh, you know like Wolfgang Puck's restaurant, they're not traditionally trained. It's just you know the thing about it's like being an artist. Either you have it or you don't, right? But, yes. but anybody uh, can learn how to be a chef if they love it. This just takes passion. And I think you and, exactly. I, remember, you and I spoke earlier, we kind of grew up sim in a similar way. You know, your Polish grandmother cooked all the time. My grandmother cooked all the time. My mother cooked all the time. I we cooked every single meal. Like there was all, the kitchen was always bustling. And then we, Correct. Grew, can... we grew everything in our yard. And so I learned really young how to, you know, like I've got some basil here. So seeing her while it's wilting, but you know exactly, it, it, it's all about passion. Garden and all different kinds of herbs and fruit, and just you know, you really learn very much how to cook that way. Besides it, so I'm excited to collaborate with you. Um, yeah, me too. And, and you're and you are in Montreal, is that correct? I am in Toronto at the moment. Toronto, I'm sorry. Yeah, I live in the, in downtown Toronto. I should I should say like I always get all the different. Uh, Suburbs or pro what do you call them? Pro pro what do you call the different areas of Canada? Like we, we're in provinces. The states, provinces. provinces. So Montreal, Montreal is in Quebec, and uh, Toronto is in Ontario, okay. uh, as well as Ottawa, which is the capital city, is in Ontario, but sitting on the edge. You know, you just cross the bridge and you're in Quebec. Yeah. Um, so I did some gastronomy. Um, uh, chronicles on television in Quebec. So in in Quebec is French, right? Um, and now we are in Ontario, which is English speaking province here in Canada. Um, okay. I've been, I've been cooking in the U S I was, uh, French if I went there, what you're saying. Oui, absolutely. Oui, oui. <laughs> exactement, exactement. Comme ça, uh, Parfait. Je Parfait. Je I yeah. know a little bit of French, very little. Yeah, but you've got, you've got the basic, you've got um, the basic. Uncle, uncle, right? Uncle. That's already a lot. That's already a lot. It's I a good that, start. I don't know kitchen, but this is Me, Me, Me Maison, this house, right? We, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Maison. Okay. Me Maison. What, how do you say kitchen in French? Cuisine. Cuisine. How is, he's asking you, how is the weather in Toronto? How is it? So currently, I was outside. Uh, I was outside this morning because I had to buy these delicious ingredients here. So I stepped outside and it's uh, pretty warm, actually, uh, pretty warm. I mean, for us, it's warm. It's like minus five, something like that. Wait, what? So there's no it's what? Minus five degrees, degrees. Yeah, we use degrees here, not Fahrenheit, so I'm not too sure. 
The Fahrenheit is how I heard it. Warm? It is warm? It's warm? It is warm because like two days earlier, it was like minus 30, right? Oh, the real feel is minus 30, three zero below zero. So, uh, so now there's no time to question, now. That answers your question, old Greg. It is minus five degrees. He's, he considers that warm. I would, I am such a baby. I would, I wouldn't even know what to do. I honestly, I mean, I have some warm clothes, but you know, it's so sunny and warm here. Warm to me is like 70 degrees. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. It is downtown Toronto. So you've got snow obviously yes. here on the, on the, you see the snow. Right. This is. This is from my bedroom. Yeah, my the view. <laughs> yeah. So I was. Uh, I was just. Uh... I'm in the hell. What is that? <laughs> Someone says we're in hell. Because in Dubai, that's uh, that's not uh, in Dubai because oh, it's so God. it's so are hot. You, are you in hell? <laughs> Define hell to me because. <laughs> Yeah, this is a cold. This He's is a cold hell here. What? what? Yeah, Celsius. Celsius is thirty below. Yes, I, so, I, I, hope I believe Dubai in. Is in hell. You guys are asking me to go to Dubai, and you're telling me it's hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Dubai is uh, for uh, at the moment it is warm, so he's saying he's he's saying that it's currently Hi. cold. But compared to Hi, here, how are you? Nice to see you. <laughs> Happy Saturday. I, okay, so you're what? There, he, it must be. Just about, is it about midnight in Dubai right now? Am I right? It is, it is uh, pretty warm, but for now it's still. No, but is it midnight? February, oh, at the moment, yes, it's uh, nine That's hours ahead. Degrees. So... Okay, 28 degrees. Okay, it's not below yeah. five. Okay, 20, you're 28 degrees. Still, 28 Celsius. degrees is, is not warm. <laughs> no, 28 degrees Celsius. It is warm. Okay. Celsius, yeah. It's like a hundred for a night. It's like a hundred for a night or something. I don't know. I don't know the conversion, but it's about. Oh, that. okay. Now you're making now you're making me do math. Forget it. Makes it. Sense. I'm gonna stick but to being I'm gonna stick to being a chef and to being a sexy chef. Okay. I'm not a February, mathematician. February in Dubai is the month of the Dubai Shopping Festival. We've got the Dubai uh, Shopping Festival on the month of. Uh, of February plus so listen, if you guys are in Dubai, it's shopping festival. Go ahead and buy me gifts. You can go to Dubai right now and uh, do some shopping for sexy show. <laughs> exactly. I, some, exactly. I wear a size. I wear a size uh, eight shoe. So there you go. Anyway, all right. So I will show you the ingredients. We are. Um, so, but do you? Um, so you cook for fun, right? Or do you? Do you? Uh, have you ever yes. worked as a chef, or you just do it for fun? Uh, for fun, but I did. Uh, I, I was a cook in the U.S. 15 years ago uh, for Flying J Travel Plaza. Um, um, that was pretty. It was pretty neat. That was my experience in in the U.S. cooking cooking there for the tra uh, Flying J Travel Plaza. Yeah. Nice. I was just cooking there, nice. but uh, so that was professionally. That was uh, yeah. That was my job 15 years ago in the U.S. Awesome. But you now I do different things. Go to college in the U.S. Sorry? Did you go to university in the United States? Uh, that was my plan <laughs> to go to uh, Georgetown, Georgetown University. Okay. But instead, I ended up in the UK. So I did uh, my Bachelor of Management in the UK. And then I went back to Italy in Rome for, for my uh, MBA in uh, international marketing. So tell me, tell me about your YouTube station. So this is a station that you and uh, yeah. I have asked me to participate in. And it's really beautiful. They just started a YouTube station. Of, uh, yes. Chefs from international chefs from everywhere. Yes. I'm honored, exactly. to, I'm honored to be asked to be on it. And so tell Absolutely. us a little bit about that and tell us the handle and then let's get cooking. Absolutely. So we are we are live on YouTube right now and uh, and uh, basically we have this uh, channel. It's called Vignette Farm. Vignette. That's uh, V I N Y A T Farm. And it's all about the Y-A-T, Vignette so, Farms on farm. YouTube. On YouTube, on Facebook as well. We are live on Facebook at the, at the okay, same I'll time. I'll make sure to put that on my, um, when we post this, I'll make sure to put that info there. And you, yes, guys, we've got, um, you guys are going to have a kick-ass YouTube station. Yes. We've got chefs And we've got, uh, we've got the right? same, same uh, in, uh, channel on Instagram as well, same name. And it's mostly like educational um on um, how to prepare like um, um, 
a tasty dish, for example, or it's all about agriculture and farming and land and ingredients, like the real ingredients, how to grow. I've got some uh, potatoes in there, for example, sweet potatoes and uh, yam and everything. Um, so it's all about produce, the milk, uh, or the cheese. <laughs> yes, the milk. yes, quality of cheese, quality of wine. Food and love and sex entice all the same senses. So that's Absolutely. like my that's my whole message, you know, because it really we can't live without love and we can't live without food. And, and winery. And, <laughs> and yes, and wine for wine. you, yes. I don't drink, but yes, you have your wine, I have my uh, you know, public drink. What? Because I was I was actually born in Burgundy, uh, in in the vineyard. Basically, you've got all the vineyards around the house where my mom lives. There, it's all vineyards. You can see on the channel. You can see oh on my, my gosh! On my, how uh, fun is that? On my Facebook, yes. So I was like wow. eating grapes, you know. So well, I grew up. Just, I grew up literally with literally in your blood. Like that's who you are. Absolutely. That's how Absolutely. I feel. That's how I feel. Like I, as a chef, you know, it's just it's just part of my DNA. It is who I am. So I've Absolutely. been doing it my whole life. I love it. Um, so today, um, I, it's really, you can't really see my, my food. I don't, maybe, oh, maybe if I lower this, that will help. So this, this is my, my, my shirt. This is the outfit of today. <laughs> what does your shirt say? Oh, it's just guess. It's just the, uh, it's just the brown. Your sexy shirt. Yeah, it's just the cut, yeah. So look, I have, okay, so you're gonna, I'm sure everyone likes this view. Um, but I, I was gonna make, you're gonna make pasta, I'm gonna make pesto. And my pesto is, I like really clean, simple food. Um, I do not add pine nuts to my pesto. I just do Parmesan cheese, um, garlic, olive oil, and of course, basil. So it's really that easy. Um, fresh, but, fresh basil. And you know, it's everything fresh ingredients, um, you can never go wrong in the kitchen, sorry, if you have, uh, you know, fresh ingredients. So, and prep, preparation, I tell everyone, prepping and fresh ingredients. Um, so I will show you, I will show you what I, uh, what I use. Uh, so we've got the base, the base is the meat, okay, because it's a meat, it's a meat sauce, okay, okay. so I've got ground beef in here. I have about 500 grams, but if it's about uh, the pound, you've got fresh, fresh cilantro. Super love tasty. It. I love it. I love your fresh the basil. Is the best. Yeah, fresh basil, fresh cilantro. I love it. Uh, onion. We've got onion here. We've got different leaves. We've got olives. I've got, I'm using green olives, but usually uh, you can put black olives in there. It's more, it's a little bit stronger, the taste. Gorgeous. We've got parmesan, parmesan for the final touch. We've got hot sauce. Hold it up. We've Hold got it up. Let me well, the hot sauce thing, he's, you know what? He is going to have this soon because we're having someone exactly. bring him my hot sauce. Yeah, and, that's um, the Petit Chef Yeah, that's this habanero hot sauce for sure. Second Absolutely. Chef habanero hot sauce. Um, yeah, what is more is more uh, very important too is the uh, the olive oil. So I lo I uh, usually take a strong uh, olive oil. What I mean by strong is the bold uh, taste. Mm -hmm. You can, for example, for this ground, you can see it marked in here, like the intensity is five olives. So you can have a... Hi, a mild... How are you? Nice to see you. <laughs> you hey, can guys, have a mild... I want to send a badges. If you appreciate the content, I appreciate it if uh, you send badges to us. Um, and if you just jumped on, I'm here with Dr. Vincent Perot, a.k.a. Yep. Chef. Uh, he's in Canada, and he's showing us how to make a beautiful pasta dish. And then I'm going to show you how to make a simple pesto that will just take seconds. Okay, yes. go ahead. <laughs> so uh, so that's it. Yeah, this is for the list of the ingredients. So, um, awesome. So, uh, let's, let's so let's the olive oil that there. you use, extra virgin olive oil. Yes, so Absolutely. basically. I, I don't have my container, but I have the same. I keep it. This is just an old trick, you know, from restaurant, my catering. You know, I just put I put all of my uh, ingredients that I use a lot in just these bottles so I can easily have access to it. Yes, so this is the olive oil I'm using here in North America, just for convenience. Yes. But in Dubai, in Dubai we import um, olive oil from Southern Italy. Nice. So from the region I am from, the, the hill of the boot of Italy, because you have less filter, it is less filtered. 
So you've got all the properties, you've got the bulk of the olives. It's super tasty. So what do you and... say, would you agree with me on this? Yeah, it's... Uh, would, it's you, uh... would you agree? This is what I tell people. Unfortunately, like all, all, all olive oils are not the same. And a lot of commercial olive oils that you buy in the grocery store that say are sur virgin, they're really filled with all different oils in it. So yeah. it's, I tell people if there's a few things you really want to spend a little bit more money on in your kitchen, I would say it's olive oil is one of them. I, yeah. you, know, you don't want to be cheap about it because it honestly isn't even healthy for you if you're not using the right, ol right olive oil. So really Correct. research your olive oils because so many, so many, you'll buy these big bottles and they're like, oh, only, you know, $8, but they're not really, they're filled with all different oils that a are big, not good, big, that are not good for you. For olive oils, uh, olive oil is from, uh, from Spain. Spain, Spain, like, uh, it's back, got lands and lands and lands of tree, olive trees. And uh, they are big worldwide producer of olive oil. Yeah. Uh, but in, in, in industrial quantities, okay, they go by the quantity. So it's all about, uh, yeah, keep going, you know, with, with the quantity and feed the world business. But if you want like a more artisanal um, Italian, for example, uh, olive oil, where it requires more um, uh, dedication to the work, the preparation of this olive oil, definitely yeah. you go like Italian, Southern Italian with the pulp, the pulp of the, uh, same as an orange juice. You've got an orange juice with Bertoli, no pulp, Bertoli, or, Bertoli, pulp, pulp or best, pulp. Uh, Someone's making a comment, Bertoli is the best commercial distributor, distributor, LOL, is that what you said? Oh, oil, yes. Yeah. Bertoli, I, yeah. So, um, you know, because yeah. I buy olive oil from, uh, distributors here and that's, um, the brand, that's the brand that i'm using here nice, in yeah. and you know the reason guys why i put olive oil in a squirt bottle like this is because say you spend a lot of money and you have a really nice olive oil you don't want to just dump out so this controls it rather than it all just pouring out this is nice because it you know it's like it's like a, a slower drizzle see yeah you weren't even watching it's, it's, no, 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 see, <laughs> I wasn't the YouTuber. Pay attention. <laughs> Pay attention. I just play, I'm just playing with you. So, okay, so show us what you're going to cook. I'll do the, um, I mean, I can make the pesto after if you want, or it'll take me well, about, it'll take me about you, can 30 do. seconds to make. Yeah, uh, yeah, let, I will start first. Uh, it would take me like uh, less than five minutes, and then we leave it mijote right we leave it uh okay i love slowly. that and in the meantime oh, so where, it's why it's, uh, why it's i love you don't forget to send badges if, if i'm your favorite content creator just send me a badge it'd be lovely and also um if i'm not that's cool too just come on and join us i'm here with vincent moreau international TikTok international he has a station on youtube called vinyat v-i-n-y-a-t it's um Basically, his message is very similar to mine. This is made beautiful gourmet food. He's going to show us how to make a kick-ass pasta in like six exactly. minutes. And I'm going to show you how to make a pesto sauce in about one minute, 30 seconds. So um, it's really not complicated. It's just, you know, having the passion for it and having the right ingredients. Is that correct? Exactly. In like six exactly. minutes. And I'm going to show you how to make a pesto sauce in about one minute, 30 seconds. So um, it's really not complicated. It's just, you know, having the passion for it and having the right ingredients. Is that correct? Exactly. Actually, with Vignette, we import uh, Italian ingredients from Italy to Dubai. So in Dubai, we, we, we sell uh, these, uh, these uh, quality ingredients like uh, Italian wine, Italian cheese, like parmi Parmesan, for example, Parmigiano Reggiano, um, olive oil, uh, chocolates, you know, this kind of uh, products. Parmesan. Yeah, in Italy, in, I'm, in, in Dubai, I'm, like, I'm, like the other way. I'm like showing chocolate, chocolate star vegetables. Chocolate is, chocolate is a natural aphrodisiac. And uh, I have some cacao True. powder infused in my balsamic. So it keeps True. all the juices flowing. All right, so okay. let's get started on your dish. Valentine's is around the corner, everyone. We're going to save this video. And we're going to, uh, it's on you. It'll be on YouTube. It'll be on my uh, feed as well. 
where um, hopefully this will inspire you to cook Valentine's dinner with your with your loved one, with your partner, with your spouse, with your crush, uh, whoever you want. And uh, hi, Kesh, how are you? Nice to see you. Happy Saturday from, he's in India. It might be Sunday. Oh, yeah. It's Sunday in India probably, right? Yes. From India, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yes, you need the product. I agree. <laughs> I'm getting into <laughs> Vincent, but you guys, uh, like you, while he's pre prepping, you can tell me when to stop talking because I'll keep talking. <laughs> no, that's fine. So I just, uh, I just poured a good quantity of, uh, of olive oil in, uh, in my frying pan here. And then I put my, uh, my thermostat, my thermostat on. Uh, water is already boiling here. That's fine. And uh, then I will start. So here's the, the trick. Instead of instead of starting usually with um, frying your your onions, I will start with the meat first because I need the meat to be done quickly before the onions because I want the onions to stay juicy and not too crunchy. You know what I mean? Not too dry. Okay. Yeah. I love onions. Um, so I use uh, I if I can get a hold of them. Um, you know, my family's in Maui, so I spend a lot of time in Maui, and we have Maui onions all the time. If I can get them here in Arizona, I always prefer to personally cook with Maui onions because I like a little bit a uh, slight sweetness to it. I love onions. Yeah, you can add some garlic as well. It's you can. I mean, in the recipe, the original recipe, you have some garlic. Okay. But it's sometimes a bit hard on digestion. You need to remove the green part inside the. So how the, much the onion? How much onion did you use in the recipe? Just eat? one half. A half. So for five hundred for five hundred grams of meat, I will I will use only one half of. So onion. we have a lot of people yeah. here that are not uh, um, from Canada, so they won't know what five hundred grams of meat is. Can you try? Is that like it's, a, uh, it's a pound. A pound. Okay, so a pound of meat, yeah. a half of an onion. Um, and uh, guys, onion is always a great way to start any base of, you know, any meat dish that you're preparing. Onions. Exactly. And, and then for me, do you add olive oil and butter or just olive oil? Um, I just use the olive oil. Nice. I keep, I keep it flavored. Yeah. Yeah. I, exactly. So I add butter when I'm caramelizing them um, only. But yes, olive oil is great. And are, I, you gonna I don't brown, to, are you going to brown them or are you just going to soften them? No, yeah, soft enough. I don't want them caramelized, not brown. So it will just stay juicy and, and cook in the sauce. So what, in kind the of, soft what kind of heat do you put that on to make that? What, kind of, what kind of? Do you, do you have it on a medium heat the whole time or do you have it hot and you bring it down? Or I like to explain this to people so they understand. Yes, well, I usually start, uh, it's dark now, okay? I will, uh, I will show you how I do. Up. I will turn the camera facing this way. We can't, all we can see is, we can't, we need to see your food. Yep. Hi, everyone, oh. happy Saturday. Happy to see you guys here. I have Vincent Moreau. He's an uh, um, international doctor, <laughs> doctor yes. of everything. Um, he is a, uh, not a chef by trade, but he has been cooking since he was a kid, just like me. Um, yeah. He has a beautiful dish that he's made, preparing in six minutes. Gorgeous. Yes, I've got, got, I've got my own uh, cilantro here. Cilantro, okay. Yes. What I will so do, I will just salt. softening the onions, and then after the onions are softened, are you adding the meat? Uh, I will do I will do the meat first, uh, and I will salt the meat first in order to get the blood out of the meat. That will uh, that will help. You know? that's just ground beef, but you can use minced uh, minced lamb, or you know, if you want it more flavored. That's yeah, very very simple. Okay, so I'll start with it first. Hey, so this up? is I'm why here. I'm here with the uh, chef right now. He's showing us how to cook a beautiful pasta dish in six minutes. Yeah, I put my thermostat here. I put my thermostat here to the max. You can you can see it in the corner. Uh, simply because I want the meat to be done firmly first. Right. I will show you YouTube and other channels at the same time. 
What do you mean? Six only? Only. What do you mean by six only? I don't know what that means. That was for you. I told me. Nadar saying, Nadar saying six only. I don't know what he means by that. Don't lose your time. That's what he said. You have six minutes only. He's telling you, Nadar's telling you to get on it. Yeah. The way that you make it in six minutes, everybody, is you need to have your have your oven and your heat on first. Have it ready to go. Yeah, there you go. The way that you cook in six minutes also is to have all your food prepped and ready before. At, at this point, I will add um, I will add the salt right away. At, he's adding here. He's adding salt. And me, I put salt in my hand and I just uh, splash it over, or, or you can. Good. He probably could look like he put about maybe a quarter to half a teaspoon of salt in that. And I've got I've got black pepper here. Okay, so black pepper. Black pepper. Why? Because um, okay, you were asked a question. What kind of beef are you using? So it's ground ground beef. And I have to go fast because I put it to the max here, the thermostat, right? So it would detach the meat more easily. Okay, so it's ground beef, and um, I always say um, be very cautious about where you buy your meat, your sources. If you can, go to local local butcher or farmers that are um, respectably, uh, you know, butchering their meats and taking care of their uh, feeding the animals with proper food, and it'll taste better. Um, exactly, yeah. So I yes, put all the, the salt the and the pepper right at the beginning so that the, the meat is not cooked yet, so it can absorb all these uh, these extra ingredients. Because when it's cooked, it's cooked. It doesn't absorb anymore, right? So everyone, if you want to learn how to... Uh... So you see these big chunks of... <laughs> not easy to show like this. But... These big chunks of meat. And the thing is, you don't have to, you don't, you don't have, at least me, you don't have to have it fully cooked because as you're adding, you can add flavors into it. You don't, you don't want the meat fully infused before you put everything in. So yeah, add yeah, your yeah. spices and add what you want. And, uh, you know, meat does not have to, it could be a little bit. Okay. I will show you these are if I transport the camera instead. So you see the meat is completely detached now in different flakes. It's like flakes of, uh, of meat. Lovely. Yum. I'm yeah, like, yeah, so it's very, very light. You see, it's very light now. The meat is completely detached. It's not like big, uh, big chunks. Okay. So at this point, I can reduce my, my uh, stove, my thermostat. Yes. To to medium. Because we're gonna reduce your stove to medium, okay? Because we can leave it for a for a while. Okay? So as you're cooking the meat, you know, first you let it you let it uh, open up and cook a little, then you start adding flavors to it, so it can start infusing. Yeah. And the thing with people, um, I don't know what kind of pan you're using, but when I use an iron skillet, an iron skillet or a wok, it holds the heat. So you can have the heat up high at first just to get the pan nice and hot, but then reduce it because the pan will just keep getting warmer and warmer. So you don't want to keep it at a high heat. Otherwise, everything will start uh, overcooking and get burnt. So you're better off just, you can bring up the heat just to get things started to sear whatever you want, but always bring it down. Now I will uh, I will work on the onion. Uh, the onion. I will keep big chunks of um, of the onions because it's more tasty. If it's too fine, no. <laughs> six minutes. You only have you have like one minute left. <laughs> oh yes. Hurry up. <laughs> Just kidding. You should enjoy yourself when you're cooking. I think, you know, when you're cooking with someone, you, you don't have to be fast. You can take your time. 
But I think a lot of people that, you know, say, oh, cooking takes so long. It's not true. You can make a beautiful meal if you have all the right fresh ingredients. You can make a, a dish in, you know, anywhere from six to 12 minutes. It's that simple. Yeah. I wonder, should I start making the pesto while you're doing this? Because he has his back to us. Are you sure you'll finish in time? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Nadar, if I was in the kitchen, it would have been done already, okay? You know what I need? Uh, the famous apron from... The apron? Uh, yeah, the apron from, uh, from Italy. You know, the David? The meat from Michelangelo? Is he's got this apron and it's showing it's it's a sexy apron business. Najar, I think you know, Vincent is French, so he's just taking his time. He's being very French. And that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's his sexy way of cooking. And exactly you know it, it, to the French, six minutes, twenty minutes, what's the difference? It's the same, right? Am I right? So you, exactly. <laughs> not. Exactly. So you see I've added my onions. I've added the onions now, so it could make juice, all right? Hi, everyone. Feel free to send a badge. Um, uh, Vincent is making a beautiful, I think, is, did you say a bolognese? Or what kind of, uh, what kind of? Yeah, pasta? bolognese, bolognese sauce, it's meat sauce. And we call it, in Italy, we call it pasta al ragu. Nice. Yeah. Do you add cream to your bolognese? No, 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 no. That's not, yeah, that's different. That's, <laughs> very, that's very American, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, you don't put cream. No, you've got, uh, yeah, you've got, you've got different types of, uh, of sauces. Okay, so so far right, we have an onion. He softened an onion, a half of an onion. He finally chopped it, he softened it. I love to use an iron skillet. I kick up the heat high, and then as I'm cooking, I bring it down, because if you keep yeah. an iron skillet, on high heat, it's, it's going to get ridiculously hot and burn everything. So you bring it down. He's just softening it up. He's, he didn't even brown it. He wanted it just soft. So it has that sweet flavor to it. And then he added... Um, what I'm adding now... No, I know. No uh, cream the Italian way. You're right. No, it's not the Italian way, but the Americans like to do funny things sometimes, don't we? I agree. Um, if... Sometimes, I'm not going to lie, I add a little creme fraiche just because I like it. But um, I understand the traditional way is not to do that. So, Vincent, yeah. is it true in Italy that you do not add pine nuts to pesto? You do not add what? In Italy, do they add pine nuts to pesto? No, do you no, you stick to the basic uh, the basic uh, recipe. Okay, so I don't food. I I don't I don't add pine nuts to my pesto. That's why I'm asking because I always tell yeah. people I tell people they don't they like they, they don't make it like that in Italy. So I just do parmesan. Right. Parmesan. Right. Parmesan. Yeah. Parmigiano. Yeah, parmigiano reggiano. Yes, you can always like customize your own recipe. It's okay. You did, don't have did, you to like my, did you like my accent, parmigiano? Yeah, parmigiano reggiano. Parmigiano, e, e, uh, garlic, I don't know how to say that, and um, basil, olive oil. That's it, guys. That's how I make my pesto. It's so easy. <laughs> I could have made it about 20 times now. Yeah. There we go. Let's see. Okay, so Vincent, again, he's French, so six minutes to him means, you know, 20 minutes, maybe I'll have it in 20 minutes. <laughs> let, me, let me have a cigarette first and think about it. It's true. <laughs> um, oh, Moshari, maybe, I don't know. Exactly. Well, I've, let's, go, uh, let's go watch a French film for a while. <laughs> I've added uh, the diced tomatoes. I love uh, the French. I love France. I love Italy. I lived in Italy in my 20s, by the way. Oh, the yeah. best, best food in the world is the French and Italians and the Spaniards. Spanish food is beautiful. Mm -hmm. So thanks for joining. Keep joining us. It's Saturday. It's um, We're trying to teach you how to cook in a supposedly six minutes, but it's okay. <laughs> No, it's done Take now. Time. It's done now. We're gonna to leave enjoy, it rest. Enjoy life. Enjoy cooking. Um, our whole point is that if you want it, 
to cook something in six minutes, you could. <laughs> the white sauce is Northern Italian. Yes. So I was in Milan and I was like, yeah. I was like 20 something just a couple of years ago. And yeah, um, Milan. In Milan, you've got recipes with uh, usually the north, northern Italy, they eat rice, and southern Italy, they eat uh, pasta. Uh, because you've got all the, the rice fields in, in northern Italy. So I grew up there when I was a child in, in northern Italy. Where, where in um, Italy? What's where? Well, in different different parts, but Novara, when I was in grade, grade I don't know, I was like uh, 10 years old or something, I don't know. Uh, Novara, Novara, Vercelli, it's, uh, it's in between Milan and Turin. So you've got all the rice fields over there. So when you drive on the road, you can end up in the ditch and you are just like in the, in the rice fields. It's all flooded. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, so it, you know, as Vincent, I'm here in his kitchen. He's in my, we're cooking together. See, this is like, what, this is my point about cooking. See, now he's telling me some really fun stories and that that's what's really cool about cooking with people and cooking together exactly we don't Vincent and I don't know each other we've met uh virtually one time but you know we could converse all day about stories around oh yeah I've got around. plenty of stories right. I've got things <laughs> right so and and that's why I tell people it's really such a it's intimate because you could you could literally not know the person at all but the minute you start talking about a, a memory around food or how you learned how to cook or where you were when you had a specific dish. It just, it, it makes the conversation right intimate and interesting. So I just keep finding out more. <laughs> like I already know that your Polish grandmother cooked all of your meals. All yeah. Time. Yeah. And I, yeah, I, I was one I, time. I, I, was, I was one I, time, I don't know, around uh, maybe 18 years old or something. And I was in, uh, I was in Novara. I was in Novara fair, international fair. Yeah. Uh, representing, I was um, I was representing the kiosk, uh, representing France with the French gastronomy. Uh, well, different producers like uh, he was representing. Yeah, yeah, represents. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm, trying, I'm, I'm trying to add humor this, through this. Ignore me. I'm probably not that funny, but guys, this is the first time in something and something option. I don't know. Do you hear what that person said? <laughs> See what they said. Of course. There's something about the opinion. I don't know. Anyway, um, you know, as I was saying, it's really, it's always fun. It's always fun to learn about other people's experience in life through cooking. It's so much fun. Look at that. How beautiful. Okay, so tell us what you just did. Yeah, 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 yeah. So basically in Milan, you've got uh, the eat more risotto. Okay, so the rice, those rice fields. Uh, for cooking risotto, risotto with white wine. Uh, so if you have risotto with uh, saffron, for example, it's definitely not Milanese style it's because we don't have saffron in, in Northern Italy, right? No, that, it's, that's, uh, very, it's that's very uh, like uh, Moroccan or Spanish, right? Yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. So, um, so if you want, you cannot have like a, a typical Italian risotto with saffron. That doesn't make sense. It is delicious. I love it. Yes, okay, you're right. I love the tutorial, tutorial does take a little bit longer. You're right. We were just, I'm just being funny because we said six minutes. You can make it in six minutes, but we're just talking. We're enjoying ourselves. He's showing us how to make a traditional, beautiful. 